right, we got some more stuff coming for the greenhouse. On the, uh, the ends of the greenhouse, we're gonna be uh, putting up panels that look like the siding on our house, so that's what's getting dropped off right now. Alright, things are definitely getting excited. I started framing tonight, so I know it doesn't look a whole lot different, but as you can see behind me, I got the uh, the top header piece up. Um, and it took a while to install because you got to bolt it into the frame, and then I've got the, uh, the bottom board going all the way across. So those are the two pieces I need. Now I can start framing um, the, uh, the big posts that are going to go into the ground. So that's what I'm doing right now. Time to get digging. I think I've had about enough digging for this year, but uh, I got one, two, three, four more holes to dig, and then that should be uh, that should be it. So. We've gone vertical. Well, it's morning time. Yeah. And Jason's been out here since six? Three o'clock in the morning. Since three o'clock. <laughs> it was still dark then. Yep, I had the, uh, the headlights of the, the ranger on. <laughs> Never went to bed last night. <laughs> yep, so he's working on getting the front framing on the greenhouse. Yeah. And uh, got the opening for the door. It won't be this tall. But yes, it will. No. <laughs> oh, great. I was expecting it to be that tall. What do you mean it's not going to be that tall? <laughs> the doors would open and they'd be wider than the... Uh... But yeah, so this is the, uh, the the width of the door opening. So this, this I think, was the hardest part for framing is getting the, the bottom board mounted onto the frame and the top one because it's got to get bolted into the frame. Jason put a board along the bottom here and um, that's because we are going to backfill that with all stone because in this area it goes down and it's a wet spot. Right, so when we built the greenhouse we raised it up out of the ground a little bit so this way you know we can have the, the stone kind of come up to here and then pitch back and so that should prevent the water from it's the same thing we do when we build houses we raise the top of the wall out of the ground so that we can pitch the grade away. Um, it's not gonna be perfect over here because we are quite a bit downhill, but it's definitely gonna, gonna help as opposed to just having this flat on the ground, so. If we had issues with water, we could always put a, uh, a drain tile in the ground, kind of like right in this area to collect the water so the water would fill into the drain tile and then we would run that drain tile right to the waterway. It's called a French drain. So we could always do that if needed. I don't think we'll need to do that, but. Here's the new potato garden. Everything has dew on it again. I think I've discussed this in the last video. I think I was out here in the morning on another video, but everything has been getting dew because uh, we've been having some really cold mornings here. And it's not normal for this time of year. No. Yeah, it's almost like a uh, in fall time when yeah. you, uh, Mornings are cold, the days warm up, but we're still in the beginning of August, so we'll see if that's just how it's gonna be for the rest of the, uh, the summer or what. Everything's looking beautiful this morning, and it's so much prettier in person than it is on camera. So every time I'm looking in the camera, I'm just like, sheesh, like I just wish it would capture how it looks to us. I think we're gonna have to upgrade our camera well, we're going to have to anyways, because um, a lot of you guys have been requesting a microphone for us. And we definitely agree with you guys. So um, that's something hopefully we, maybe Jason and I will treat ourselves this Christmas to a new camera. Everything over here is getting big. We have cushions piled up over there just because we've been getting lots of rain. Um, everything's looking good over here. So yeah. Just a lot going on. Ooh, our tomatoes. We're starting to get a big one turning there. 
That is really exciting for us, you guys. This is going to be our first large tomato harvest. I didn't grow as many this year because my dad grew a lot in his garden, so I figured I'm just gonna go over there and harvest some of his, because they're not gonna eat them all. And then here is that garden that you guys saw us plant up a while ago. This is where the peas were with the corn, the pickles, the dill, and then the pumpkin on a stick and zinnias. So everything's coming really good. As you see, the seeded pickles are bypassing the planted ones because remember the planted ones were a little distressed and we didn't know if they were going to come or not well a couple of them are coming okay and that one there is producing here's the dill look how lush and full that is coming in there that is going to be amazing it looks like a tray of seedlings and it's got all kinds of little dew on it all right, so these sunflowers are almost retired, but we're gonna leave them. Um, they become like a natural bird feeder. The birds will come in and just land on them and eat them, so we're just gonna leave them. That's always fun to watch through the windows on the house. So we just went ahead and pulled our second batch of peas because they were all done for the year. And what we did then is we worked up the soil just like the other bed in the other videos we showed you. In the middle, I did a row of flowering annuals along with just a lemongrass, just for that extra height and flare in there. And then a row in front here of peas, and a row in the back over there of peas. And with these early mornings, that's gonna be awesome for the peas. Oh, look at, there's Jason, he's so hungry. He breakfast. <laughs> he worked up an appetite. <laughs> these tomatoes are just so good and in the morning they're you know they're like a little bit uh, cool as opposed to during the day they kind of heat up so yeah I like them just uh, not too cold but a little cool yeah it's probably nice mm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Jason be careful you don't have any bottom there you dropped the screw right in the <laughs> hole oh boy <laughs> slam dunk <laughs> There we go. It's another morning and Jason's working on framing the greenhouse, taking it to another step. Yep. And we brought in reinforcements. Yep. We got forest. We got forest we, working we here. We built our original, original raised bed. So he's doing the doors right now. And uh, then we'll start putting the panels up and it's gonna really start looking like, uh, like a house. Yeah, yeah, it will. Yeah. Well, I just got finished up cleaning and fertilizing any of the flowers and the vegetables, so everything looks nice. Uh, we'll have to get our cushions back out here after all that rain we just got. I also want to show you guys the update of how the greenhouse is coming along today. It's coming. Looking good, huh? Looking really good. Looks great. All right, so uh, what are you up to today? Oh, well today I am fertilizing my flowers. So we're using a good bloom booster. We're mixing it into the water because it's water soluble. And I'm gonna go ahead and get them all watered. I already did my flowers on the other side, so I'm just working my way this way. Vegetable, vegetable beds do not get this kind of fertilizer. They're more the, um, the jobs and worm castings, just because that's where our food is, but uh, we don't use anything natural on our flowers, because uh, we don't eat them, so we like them to look pretty. And yeah. 
take some good stuff to get them there. Yep. So, yep. All right, so now it's time to get the basket. And I always water from the same spot in the back. And I always make sure it's under the foliage. And I just go ahead and... Hoist her up there. Yep, and, and we do have a fertilizing injector, but we have yet to hook it up this year. So I want to make sure that this drips from the bottom. That's our goal. That's how you know the the basket's completely watered. Oh, oh there nope, it is. there she goes. There it goes. Sometimes it's a delayed, a delayed response. That's when you know it's watered all the way through to all of the roots. And then that way your basket won't get a distressed look. If you're just watering it and you don't see any water coming out of the bottom, the water didn't get to the bottom of those roots. And then the, when the bottom of those roots don't get water, that's when you start getting a stressed looking plant. And here we'll show you, it's, it's coming from the hole in the bottom, not over the side. So you want to make sure it's, it's dripping all the way through and coming out that middle hole in the bottom, not, not out the, the sides. Got to make sure you have the drainage. Got to make sure you got that hole there. All right, so these are the doors for the front of the greenhouse. And Forrest just got done building them here, but they're pretty they're pretty slick. So they've got the uh, almost like the the barn style X pattern. Um, there's there's four pieces because the doors they're double doors. Each side will open, but then if you want, you can keep the bottoms closed and you can open the tops. So then he put on this uh, this ledge right here, gives it a nice decorative touch. And then if you're standing on the inside, you can kind of lean on top of it they look awesome so i got the rest of the the studs there we can finish paneling so i'm really excited because i've been wanting these style of doors i've had them my whole life on my parents store at their greenhouse so i had to copy them so awesome i love it so much All of this is really possible because of forest. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have been, uh, No, I want to show the detail close. that he even did up there. The trim piece right up here, that detail that he added up there for me, and just all the detail and the doors. I mean, it just yeah. looks so yeah, well, amazing. The door kind of matches the, uh, it's got the angle. I love it. So cool. Yeah. Well, we are really thankful that Forrest came today to help us get this done. This is looking awesome. Yep. Jason? He sped things up by about three, four times the pace that they were going. So. Yep, yep, so thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome, yep. All right, hon, so there's still some finish work left to, uh, to do here, so um, do you want to trim up the sides and then up the, uh, up the gable? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yep, I think that'll finish it off nice. Yeah, so we'll do... Because uh, then the plastic can connect on the back of that. Yeah. So we'll do like one by... Oh, here comes, here comes Wayne. We'll see if we get his approval. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do one by up here. Yeah. And then we'll have it run, run up that I like that. Too, so. Yeah. Here comes my dad. Yeah. We'll see what, uh, we'll see what he thinks, so... How's it going? Looks like you're keeping busy. Yeah. Carpenter Jason. <laughs> yeah, four by uh, Carpenter stopped out for... Uh, I was going to say, for... God, you did that awful quick. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. I know. The double doors, so they open on the... Uh, yeah, they look nice. On the top and the bottom. Yeah. I copied your store, because I like that look. Yeah. Open, I'm just going to trim up the, the top and down the sides, and then I'll cover the the seams here with some one by and yep then you're going to cut this so it stays right on the pipe the yeah okay yeah then you're going to have to pound these in yep all right well i am done for today i've been out here since six it's about five o'clock um i ran out of wood i'm gonna have another see the cross piece going like that i'll have another one there and then i think we'll put another one there uh, we're gonna stain all the trim, the X's in the doors, and then we're gonna paint the uh, the siding the same color as our house. 
Should look awesome when it's all done. It's getting close. All right, folks, you want to talk about dedication. Casey couldn't find her big sprayer, so she's got a little hand sprayer. She's spraying every plant individually. Not every plant. <laughs> this is just for cucumber beetles and um, the little worms that those white butterflies leave behind. Mm -hmm. We're using what's used in a lot of organic gardening. It's called Monterey BT. And then I go ahead and mix it in this spray bottle. I prefer a hand sprayer. <laughs> I just want things to look perfect for yeah. the photo shoot, so I'm not taking any chances, and it's worth worth it. Right. All right. So one of the uh, the many next things on my to-do list, the uh, tomatoes have have really fallen over here. So I'm gonna try and get them staked back up if I can, and get them a little more tamed so we can walk in there a little bit more. And, but anyways, the tomatoes are just, they're popping, they're thriving. Every time I walk over here, there's more than I could even pick to eat. So I'm loving that. As I'm spraying it on the leaves, once it dries up on the leaf, then they go and they eat the leaf and then they ingest it. And that's how it kills them and worms and all the bad bugs. So that's why I like to spray when there aren't bees out here. As long as the leaves are dry, it doesn't hurt any beneficial bugs. It only hurts the bad bugs because as soon as they eat the plant, they ingest it and they're done for. So I'm really hoping that uh, we can get these guys under control. This is my second time spraying with the Monterey and so far I have to say, I mean, yeah, we've got our holes and areas, but you know, I mean, knowing that we can just come out here and pick and eat, it's just, it's worth the peace of mind. Yeah, which is what I was just doing. And it you would... know, yeah, and it keeps them under control. You know, it doesn't get rid of them completely like a bad spray would, but then again, it's like we still get all the good bugs. Yep. We get bees to pollinate, so it's so worth it. Yeah, it really definitely. Is, so. Check out our trellis. Well, there's nothing better than walking through this beautiful trellis. Although, there is something better. You can walk through, grab a little snack on the way through. How about that?